like the recording track that you're going is not recording loudly it's not recording very loudly in audacity no but i'm M- sure it's fine mine is, sh- mine is showing the same actually normally the the peaks are a little bit higher but yeah we'll go with it mm. okay okay why not <laughs> Episode 119 of We Were Gamers, a podcast about audio problems. <laughs> I don't feels that way sometimes. I don't think so. I think it'll we're we're gonna hold it together today. First of all, hold on. I got some feedback on the last podcast, and since we've started this podcast, uh, did we get did we get fan mail? N- n- I don't know if it was fan mail or hate mail or was it mail. It's 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 a podcast, and we decide what's on it. That's true. And so, sometimes some of us find things interesting. The last episode, I, I decided to leave some of our audio trouble in there. I don't know. I just felt like maybe it would make people feel better to know that they weren't the only ones that just completely struggle with changing an app. Technology is hard. That's what I'll say. Okay. Welcome back to We Were Gamers, a podcast. Not always about games, really. It's not typically about race cars, so, you know, there's one thing that it might be about and one thing that it won't be about. Well, that's not entirely true, because whenever Grand Tour comes back, it'll be about race cars. Yeah, didn't we just discuss chase scenes in the last episode? (laughs) Oh, that's right, we did. (laughs) (laughs) Whoops. But it's not Eh. always about race cars. It's also not about fact-checking, so. (laughs) That's true. Definitely true. We don't do research. We don't fact check. A lot of the times we talk about games, new games, old games. And um, this week, I think we have kind of a multimedia podcast plan for you guys because there's a lot of uh, TV coming, I think, towards the end of the year here. It's that time of the the seasons where announcements have started. New Netflix shows are hitting like every week because it's, you know, they do a, like seems like a big dump at the beginning of the year and then a little bit through the summer and then another big dump at the end. Yeah. And I know a lot of us have spun out and been interested in our own things, so I wanted to hear what everybody was interested that's coming or what we've seen or or what's happening, what what people are watching. Well, let's see. Um, That's Michael. Hey, everybody. (laughs) Oh, hello. I'm JJ. Yeah, we can do intros. Sure. Why not? Um, I'm a little off today. It's a podcast. We're on the the computer software. We put our voice on the internet web. (laughs) tube <laughs> um one that definitely caught my eye today was the new trailer for um or a trailer for the new season of true detective just came out can i interrupt you please i had to tell somebody to use the explanation a series of tubes in a non-ironic manner this week <sighs> I don't know if that sigh was audible, but it should have been. <laughs> I heard it. I had to use it to explain what a VPN was. And the only way I could figure out for this person how to explain what a VPN was to be like, okay, imagine you had not a tube, right? Like, but a, a pipe. And then you put through another. And, and then as I was explaining it, they're like, oh, cool. Like, so like if you were traveling, like sending things in tubes. And I'm like, oh God, what did I do? <laughs> Turn into the skid. <laughs> it was bad. It was really bad. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. As an analogy goes, it's not the worst one you could have made for that. I mean, right? Like, if it, it, any cylindrical thing that carries a fluid and then you stuck a different one inside could you, so you could send a different fluid was what I was trying to say. Yeah. But it harkened back to a horrible time in the advent of the internet. <laughs> I For me. You know, for for everything that, that, that a congressperson whose name I completely forget who said that line initially he's not that wrong in like the concept idea of how the internet works i believe however that um i think it was ted stevens was speaking literally yes that's the real issue is that as a concept or a analogy it's fine but as literal it is incredibly wrong i don't remember if he was speaking literally and i hope People aren't offended if I am taking that out of context and he was saying an analogy, but yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. True detective sounds better than this. (laughs) No worries. hmm. Who who watched any of true detective? Let's sound off here. 
So I definitely watched all of the first season uh, and then got a little disenchanted with the second season. Uh, we can, I guess we can go into that. Can we do in, a spoiler warning here? We'll do a spoiler yeah. warning for people that haven't seen seasons one and two of Detective, True Detective for probably, I don't know, 10 minutes or something. I watched the same amount that J- uh, Michael, your name is Michael. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Uh, I watched the same amount as you ish. Uh, JJ, have you seen season two of True Detective? Uh, no, but okay. I don't really plan to, so it's fine. Uh, Colin Farrell takes a shotgun blast to the chest, and they're like, "Oh, he's dead." I mean, as you would expect after being shot. Yeah, point blank in the chest with a shotgun, and it was like this moment where you thought season two is going to turn around. All right, it's going to be a good show. They just killed the main character. Yeah, it seemed like a... And then the next episode, before anything, and like, before having the reveal or anything else, he's just up and walking around. And then later on, they're like, oh yeah, he was wearing a bulletproof vest. Yeah, they they flashback it to like, he takes the shotgun blast in the chest and then is just like rolling around groaning in pain because he's got a vest on. Uh, so I was like, um, I'm going to use this remote. I'm going to turn this off. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yep. If yeah, that I would have done that. That's for sure. <laughs> that's bad. That's bad. I don't like that. Doing something like that in a TV show is okay if you save that twist as like the end of the episode twist, or you s- let everyone think the guy is dead the whole season, and then there's like a big twist at the end sure. of the season that turns out he was alive behind the scenes sure. or something. If he had ripped open the bulletproof vest at the end of the episode, I would have been fine. Yeah. Yeah, he got shot. I don't remember if you... I don't know that you even know who shot him. No, it was a secret. The guy was all masked up, and he, he like, lays down, and there's definitely, like, visible blood on his chin, you know? Mm -hmm. And then they explain it away later. They're like, oh, well, one of the balls caught him, like, a little bit. (sighs) And then... And then, oh, he had a vest on, and it was fine, taking a shotgun to the chest. But season one, let's let's focus on the good part. (laughs) Sure. I would assume we've all seen season one of of True Detective. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Hang on, hang on. Let me uh, let me crack open a Lone Star to drink. While oh we have yeah. The discussion. Hold on, hold on. Here's a. I'm gonna. I'm touching my soundboard, and there's a beer cracking open sound mm-hmm. that got replaced with what I was saying here. Cracking a cold one mm-hmm. with the boys. How many did we come up with for that? Is it, it's got to be somewhere on my phone or something. Yeah, yeah. We, so JJ, we we watched season one together. Um, Andy and I, oh. and probably in the second episode, one of us had the idea, you know, we should, we could turn this into a game where we have a drink of whatever it is they're drinking when they have a drink. Hmm. And the Lone Star count got pretty high. Yep. Yeah, I was just about to say that seems like a dangerous game to play with movie characters and TV or well it's a TV show because well, Woody I'm pretty sure Woody Harrelson's character is drinking them throughout the interview in the the police station oh no it was like uh, he brings in it was uh or was it McConaughey McConaughey's character is like I'm not talking unless you continue to flow me six packs of Lone Star yeah but do you actually see him drink a bunch of them yes I don't really yeah he like okay. chugs been a long more than one okay I assume their movie props right, and that course. they're whatever yeah, yeah, yeah. but you know he is a he's is he a method actor i don't know <laughs> i don't know i certainly I, I could have, i could picture mcconaughey <laughs> being totally unfazed by a six-pack in the middle of his scene <laughs> sure i know some of them are that's for sure it was a very funny post from seth mcfarlane about his um show the orville i don't know if anybody's watched that but it's it's like harkens back to the sg1 days of sci-fi where it's very episodic and not not very heavy in terms of its day to day, you know, mm-hmm. comedy sci fi show. Yeah, right? it's definitely got some comedy to it. But uh, he did he did uh, post from behind the scenes, and you know, he was live tweeting one of the episodes. He's, he's like, you know, we did decided to do real whiskey during this take every time. And they did, Ooh. you know, they were doing shots. I hope that was the end of the day. Anyway, yes. Uh, back to it, it was one way or another. Yeah, back to True Detective. Um, season one of True Detective. I don't know about you guys. Was a revelatory TV show. 
Yeah, it definitely, even ignoring actually the show itself, just the way people talked about it and the way it took on so much like popular interest and stuff afterwards was huge. Right. Like that's setting aside how great the show was itself. So, <laughs> Yeah. And I think the writer Nick Pizzoletto is kind of taking a lot of the heat for why season two got so far off the rails. Um, trying to direct it, I think, and a few other things. It just was, it had the ability to try and take on things that were kind of very scary about real life, right? Like, it gets a little fantastical at the end of the first season with who the killer is and all that, but um, there's some terrifying stuff that happens to these cops as they just go through just being cops, and, and that was pretty... It was not the wire. It wasn't overblown heroism and, and like, uh, I don't know what the the proper term for this is, but you know, like when you can't, it's the, that, that feeling of you can't look away from it because it's so sensational. A lot of cop shows and stuff try to, to outdo each other with how sensational the crimes are and all that. Yeah. yeah this one was just kind of, a, it was like a gritty serial drama. Slow burn. Very slow burn. Oh yeah, the the two guys are dealing with both of them pretty pretty tough personal circumstances on top of trying to solve this bizarre case. Mm -hmm. And yeah. yeah, nothing about it felt felt over the top and I think it was it was more compelling for that. I think it's to their credit that they allowed it to be a slow burn, you know, allowing the characters time to sort of like revel in the moments of how you know, in some cases mundane, but in other cases how just utterly weird the circumstances were. Absolutely. We could do a whole thing on season one of True Detective. It was so good. Fill us in, man. I haven't seen this True Detective season three news or trailers or anything like that yet. Yeah. So the, I mean, right off the bat, super exciting because it stars Mahershala Ali. Is he from Moonlight? Oh, okay. He's the one in uh, House of Cards. Yeah. Cool. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, so um, plug, brief plug for Moonlight. Go see it if you haven't. I don't think I've seen Moonlight. Because it, it definitely deserves to almost win and then actually win the best picture. Was that? Was that the it was movie? Moonlight. It was Moonlight that they accidentally announced La La Land. Ah, uh, okay. I have to admit that I don't... I mean, I remember the gaff, but I have stopped watching the Oscars live. Same. I watched the like recuts on the news or whatever the next day. Yeah. It's a, it was a, I'm sad. I'm going to admit that I'm a little bit sad. It's one of the things in adulthood, I guess, since we do the adulting minute, uh, that I have let go of. We used to do a party and it was like a family affair and, you know, we'd sit down and make this huge dinner and then sit and watch the whole thing. And I think Katie watches the red carpet for the dresses and then we just turn the TV off. <laughs> You know, it's I think stupid. I I sadly do not miss it really based on uh how it went and you know, it's just I just remember it being like interminably long just like t talking and talking and showing people who cuz I even then I didn't watch a ton of TV to wait to get to the awards that I actually was interested in. So, I sort of feel like the like the cut down and the quick cuts or whatever are really all I need. You know, I am a little sad about it because I know they used to be, and I know there are people behind the scenes that really love the Academy and they really love movies. And I know that Tom Hanks was back there trying to do good stuff. And I can remember vividly Billy Crystal Academy Awards and how good they were. And do you think about it? The number one issue is there's like f four to eight, commercial breaks within the first 30 minutes yep. and they're they're very long and they just get longer and the, they just they've they've taken out they try to keep shortening and shortening it and it's like the telecast is this long because a third of it is commercials you guys moving on back to <laughs> <laughs> yeah so i just right off the bat i was struck by how much it it feels like the first season it feels like he's where, um, where is just he? from where, where where are they setting so this this one is set in the middle of the ozarks 
um, in uh, northern Arkansas. Okay. Um, and he plays a state police detective um, who is trying to solve a mystery. I think um, just based on the little tiny clips they show that it involves some kids who have gone missing. Uh, and it, you know, it seems to show hit how the just p- piecing together the little bit that they show. One of the things that he struggles with is his relationship with his own kids, um, as affected by this weird mystery um, involving missing children. Hmm. But okay. it looks like it looks like maybe they they do some of the same things as season one in playing around with time and the perspective from which the story is told because it it looks like it's set the the meat of it is set several decades ago because there's a scene where it shows him I'm pretty sure it's him as an old man talking about the case like reflecting back on it mm-hmm. um, and it sounds like there might be um, a third time period as well. So it shows him in, in a, a couple of different time periods. Yeah. Huh. It's been a while since true detective has been on the air. Yeah. Yes. Do you think there's a clamoring f- for this given how it end the last one ended? I, you know, when, when we stopped watching, I didn't really follow what the reception to the end of season two was. So I don't know if um, a lot of people sort of fell off or if there was excitement for there to be another one. Because I know there was there was a, a huge fan following after the first one for who's going to be in the second one and what's it going to be about. Yeah, absolutely. But I, I, don't, I don't remember there being that after the second season. And I don't know if it was just because it wasn't there in the same way or if... People didn't really expect that there would be another one after the second one because they didn't like it as much. I don't. I don't know where the where people fell. Yeah, I didn't really follow it, so I don't have a lot of good ideas about that either. Interesting question, though. Yeah. All right. Well, HBO feels confident, and uh, maybe they can have a crossover with Jason Bateman. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, I'm. Uh, that's that's coming January. back too. Uh, yeah, Ozarks <laughs> for for the uninitiated on that joke, I guess, because it wasn't a good one. When he mentioned the Ozarks first, I wondered if they were going to do like Children of the Corn or something. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and I was like, I don't know why my mind went there, but <laughs> fair enough. But uh, this. I don't know, week, I guess. Uh, I got into some new Netflix shows. Oh, yeah. Um, There's been a spate. So let me let me guess. You watch Fultron. No. Aww. I said new, Andrew. But it, yes, it is. Season 7 came out less than a month ago. Yeah, but that's that's not a new show. Oh, you mean like new shows, not just new episodes. Got it. Okay. Yeah. So I watched... Uh, well, I guess to be fair, I only actually watched one episode of this new show so far, but I, I intend to watch more. Um, the, uh, new Matt groaning, 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 uh, the new Matt groaning cartoon, uh, disenchantment. Oh yeah. How was, uh, how was that? Uh, so again, I've only seen one episode, but, uh, I liked it tentatively. I think the premise has, uh, legs. They could do stuff with it. Uh, it will be interesting to see how they, if they weave a longer story together or if they kind of go like episodic and like adventure of the week kind of thing. Would you like answers to these questions? I have watched this show. Uh, so you've seen all the episodes already? I have completed the first season of this show. Is it good? Did you like it? <laughs> <laughs> back away from that first question <laughs> back away from the second one too i don't know um it depends on what you expect 
Okay. So what were your expectations going into it, Andy? So he started with a show called The Simpsons, right? And right. that is a very... Famously a show called The Simpsons that I think everyone knows. Uh, <laughs> I mean, come on, man. That was It was supposed to be funny, and then you turn around. And... <laughs> anyway, um, The Simpsons I would call a farce in the uh, literary sense of using ridiculous situations to point out failings in ourselves and our uh, current times. Like a satire? Uh, y- yeah. Mm-hmm. Sure. That's not the okay. word that I said, but you could change it to that word. <laughs> uh, I will say that I really liked the show Futurama. Okay, so that was the next show. Uh, and the next, that Futurama is is a comedy is a straight yes. up comedy show, right? Like Oh yeah. Yes. It you it it, it calls back a lot of other stuff, but it does not inherently try to um dramatize or sugarcoat or use the show to talk about social principles like the Simpsons does a lot. Sure. It does tackle sometimes issues of like AI independence and things like that, but it is not doing it from the reflectory, reflection based. It's not trying to show a, re- a reflection or a mirror sure. to society or anything. Right. Yeah. Um, that show is wonderful, and I enjoy it more than The Simpsons in a w- in a certain way. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm much more invested in watching episodes of Futurama. They are very often hits there are very few bad ones and um sometimes with the simpsons they get a little long-winded and and they're not funny And i feel futurama at least feels a little more timeless in a way that you can just watch a random futurama episode and not have to wonder when was this made and what year did this come out yes yeah like you do with the simpsons absolutely yeah they're very much um plug and play shows that you can watch multiple times through and catch something later that was funny that you didn't think was funny before, mm-hmm. didn't notice before. Characters you didn't like will start to be characters you like very much later on in your viewings of that show. Uh, it evolves and has evolved with time. Uh, and some of that is also that it got, what, like, you know, five seasons or something, so it got time to build on some of those characters Absolutely. As well. It's a good show. Um, the Simpsons and Futurama are not the same and i think that a lot of people that expected the simpsons when they got futurama did not like futurama if you go into this expecting futurama or the simpsons you're going to be disappointed because it is neither of those it is neither of those shows i think i like that okay (laughs) i think i think i like that it's it's at least trying to be its own project and not just sort of piggyback off the success of what has come before yeah um my i have very complicated feelings about it because yes to answer one of your questions some of the stuff um seems to like like they're making jokes in the moment and then later on in the show they come back or like situations in the moment that come back and certain ways that characters are drawn actually matter later, and you don't notice them until later on in the show. I had some issues with like very flat for performances by some of the actors, and I don't know if that was direction or not. Yeah, I would say that the did, did you get any of that from the pilot? So in the, yeah, so in the first episode, I definitely felt like at least one of the characters sounded like they were constantly bored. Um, You're talking the, about the princess, yeah, yeah. So, uh, that and I guess to be fair, doesn't get better. She, she does. She was bored most of that episode, so I guess it's not technically wrong. She pretends to be apathetic in that episode, right? Um, and much or, of the is, much and... of the show, she she is supposedly apathetic. But then they go out and they do stuff, and they say they're having fun, and um, and that's, that same flat tone seems to still be there. And I I don't know if that's direction or what i i have a hard time with that one um and it could just be Mm. a new character and a new show and expectations i had in the back of my mind but a lot of the the voices seem like they're not final 
Okay. And how long, how many episodes was the first season? Nine. Ten. Or ten. Ten? Ten, yeah. Okay, so it, it could still be a question of just finding the, their yeah, voice. Yeah, so that's the thing is I, I'm looking at it as almost like a whole pilot season, but about four episodes in, I started to wonder, like, with these rough-in voices, like, because John DiMaggio does, does like, this King's voice, but it gets kind of hard to li- listen to by the end of the show. So the voice of the king, uh, at least in the first episode, sucks. It, I, it's not better. not a fan. It doesn't get any better. That's a bummer. Yeah. So while the show might be somewhat interesting by the end, um, I, that, I, that's my struggle with it. Is a lot of the voice acting felt temp, you know, as if it was not ready yet. Yeah. I, I wonder if that's a case of like, hey, this is. They weren't working on, you know, like a Fox television budget. They're working on a Netflix television budget, and they probably spent a lot of the money on the animation. The animation is... you would expect. The animation is interesting. I have thoughts on that as well, if you'd like to hear them. (laughs) In a non-spoilery way, perhaps? Sure, yeah. There are 3D moments of the show. Okay. I mean, I feel like... Uh, you could even see that in the first episode with some of the like panning and stuff that they do across landscapes where it feels almost, eh, I, I don't know how to explain it other than the like, Hey, it looks like this was a movie that was, uh, filmed in high frame rate. So it seems too smooth and fake. And they use the animation style to skin a CGI 3d world. And oh yeah. So it's kind of like the you know in Futurama, the picture the opening because it's famous, right? You guys can remember this, and hopefully everybody else can remember this. The opening to Futurama, where they're zooming through a huge city. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, now imagine it in three D, but don't change the art. It's very disorienting. Hmm. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, I, there's a I couple wipes like, like that that are, and it's very disorienting, and that I. I don't know why they did that. I wonder if this was their attempt at like a new style thing and maybe sure. it just didn't land very well. Mm-hmm. So I, I didn't dislike the first episode. It just felt kind of flat just, in some cases. It just did that to me the whole time. Um, I didn't ever get to the point where I'm like, I, well, I don't, I never got to the point where I was like, I don't like this. So I'm going to stop. But I didn't feel like I did at the end of Voltron, where I was like, okay, cool, season eight, let's go. Sure. I guess I know, even in Futurama, though, in a lot of cases, well, Futurama feels like it has less of a through line than this show. Absolutely they, not. Yeah, there's there's definitely some continuity through this show. There are characters that yeah. evolve and do things, and like story stuff happens that you need to have watched the first part of the season. You can't jump from three to eight. But in in Futurama, almost the only thing you need to know is the storyline of Fry and Leela and whether yeah, like they're together the very, or not. The very first episode of the, of the show, and then you could jump into season three or sure. whatever. It's yeah, not a big it's deal. It's not the, the biggest deal. Yeah. Uh, okay. I mean... I think I'm going to keep up with it. We'll see how it goes. I'm. I don't mean to put you down on it or anything. Oh, I just no, no, want to no. I mean, temper whatever. your expectations that it does not. It doesn't try to land the jokes like Futurama landed jokes, and it doesn't try to um, create this dy- like family dynamic like The Simpsons, which you might expect given the opening of like, okay, this is about like the royal family. You know. Yeah, it's... I, you know, I hope that, uh, cause there were definitely a couple times in that first episode that I really did laugh. Like there was funny stuff and then there was stuff that was clearly meant to be a joke that I was just like, oh, they clearly thought that was a joke. It was, I did not laugh. So, you know, I, I want it to be good. Let's call it I a beta maybe, release. Yeah. Maybe they pick it back up or, uh, fix it up in season two. <laughs> Watch it. It's not that much of a Although, time. Sink. I guess I, I feel like Netflix already said they have m- multiple seasons of this coming. So yeah. maybe I'm like, we'll see. I mean, they got me to watch all of it. So I'm sure that their yeah. numbers say that they should probably make more. I mean, they're making another bright. So <laughs> should we talk about that at all? Like at all? I haven't heard any I, new I, news I, on that. Actually. I just, 
I feel like when somebody's, you know, maybe you should get counseling. Like maybe we should intervene, sit down with them, do something. I don't mean. They said it's it got so many streams. It had big numbers, Andrew. Is this like a? I'm trying to think of like a a movie situation, like a a hate watch situation yeah. where people <laughs> are watching it because it's a train wreck. Is it is it like it was that popular as a drinking game where they're like, wow, a lot of these <laughs> people watched it three or four times at one a.m. <laughs> I wonder, because I feel like I think I did watch it at 1 a.m. or something I like mean, that. right? You could almost get drunk and say, okay, we're going to put on bright. Every time somebody picks up the stick, take a shot, you know? Yeah. Or Man. every time some sort of inappropriate cultural appropriation happens by an orc, take a shot. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Be falling off your chair in the first five minutes. <laughs> oh, man. Um... I saw some movie news I want to get your opinion on. Okay. As fellow lovers of Dwayne the Rock Johnson. Indeed. And his continuing mission. To be in every movie. <laughs> or to remake <laughs> every film. The most recent of which was Die Hard, which he called Skyscraper. <laughs> uh, how would you feel about a Big Trouble in Little China movie? I saw this. You did? Oh, no. Well, I, I saw something about this. It has been confirmed that it is not a remake. However, that was the thing I saw. Not a sequel. Oh. It, so what's it? So wait, wait. It's not a remake? It is a sequel or it isn't a sequel? It is a remake. It's not. A, it was described as not a remake and not a sequel on the thing that I saw. So I would assume a tertiary story. So just some separate thing yeah. in that area somehow. Um, man, Big Trouble in Little China is a movie that maybe has not aged as well as some people think. I <laughs> go back and watch that again. Hmm. Why do you say that? Have you watched it again recently? Uh, I saw it like four years ago or something, I think. Okay. Uh, you know, it, look, the eighties, <laughs> uh, those effects age badly okay but the effects you gotta that's a grain of salt thing you know but I'm, like, I'm tired of people being like the effects from the 80s suck yeah they so kind what? of ruin it though at some point what's that it's they kind of ruin it at some point though the, the practical stuff where it's like oh that's a weird guy in a costume or like you know they're walking through the like smoky sewers or whatever that stuff is all good i don't have any problem with that stuff but the like clearly digitized on like white lightning or whatever looks just real bad I really um, think you just have to say this is the best they could do at the time. I, and there's not a market for di like redoing this. And I don't think it would make it any better if the White and the Lightning looked better. Uh, no. I, you can't. I don't know if you can tell that story again or go to that part of like the way that Little China is in that movie just due to the fact that you would probably get like murdered culturally by everyone of asian descent okay That's it doesn't seem terribly sensitive uh and it's kind of just like you know the guy's name is low wang and they just kind of go with it okay i you know th there are parts of that movie that are very clearly campy and are all right and then there are parts that they play straight that are just like mm -hmm. i don't know that that plays in this day you have to so play I, that movie straight. You can't not. Yeah, you can't not play that I, movie straight. I think that if you no, I mean Kurt Russell clearly does not play it straight, but the rest of everybody right. else had to. I mean he play, he plays it Kurt Russell, right? Well, right. And the Rock will play it the Rock, right? right. Which is probably yeah. the best situation you could ask for, given. Yeah. So, so if it's I, not going to be a sequel and it's not going to be a remake, I'm I'm going to guess that he's a different character they're not going to try and cast him as as the same character are they a different guy who drives his truck into oh the wrong gosh. alley could he also <laughs> be a big rig driver <laughs> so they're not calling it a sequel they call it a continuation okay I mean, so they're gonna kind of pick up yeah in in situ i guess i don't know it's a john carpenter movie you guys i don't know how you i mean they tried this with the thing and it was just not good yeah, I don't envy the task of anyone who has to write that movie or or direct it or really anything about it because man, I don't I don't know how you do 
something like that again intentionally. I don't think you can make movies like that intentionally. <laughs> no. Yeah. I, I'm I'm assuming this means there's some sort of tertiary universe. Jack Burton is Jack Burton, and Kurt, Dwayne should not try to play Kurt Russell. Yeah. Um. Yes. And it not being the 80s, you will have a 2018 sensitivity to Little China. Yeah, hopefully. Yes. But I'm going to make an argument you're not going to like. The effects shouldn't be good. I'm all for if they want to do practical effects that are bad. No, no, no. Good practical effects, but the effects shouldn't be good. They should be Jumanji-style bad. Mm. I don't know if you saw that remake that he was in. I didn't. No. So they did. Had, they had practical effects and they had digital effects, and the digital effects were that style of like mm, that was fake, you know. Uh huh. Like intentionally yeah, or just absolutely. like this is the budget we no, had. No, 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 no. Definitely oh, okay. like intentionally like you know people are different colors than the backgrounds and things like that. Got it. Um. <laughs> Because that's the the style. You can't take it too seriously. Yeah, I feel like if you want to, you know, there there are a lot of uh, fans of Big Trouble in Little China, and I feel like that sort of campy feeling that some of it had would definitely play to those fans if you tried to to recreate a little bit of that feeling. Do you think the Big Trouble in Little China fans are mostly John Carpenter fans or are not yes. John Carpenter fans? And they're like... Big Trouble in Little China 80s fans. Uh, I guess maybe there's some of both there, but I feel like that a lot of them are just fans of stuff that John Carpenter has done. If you ask them, do they also like... Um, oh my god, I just blanked on the, uh, the name of the vampire movie. Dust Till Dawn? Thank you. You're welcome. I think you would find like high amounts of crossover or like, do you like the thing? Do you like, you know, other dumb John Carpenter stuff and <laughs> you would get answers that are pretty much yes across the board there. Okay. And then if you ask also do you just like dumb 80s stuff they would also probably say yes. Oh, okay. Fair enough. So that that there's a, a very big de- Venn diagram and they're basically circles inside of each other all the way down. Yeah. Possibly. I mean you know dumb 80s stuff is bigger than John Carpenter but he was dumb in the 80s so <laughs> 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 I don't know. A dumb is a reductive word but you know the he has a style for you sure. You don't mean and it derogatorily, and I think we all no, understand what you mean. Is that, yeah. uh, yeah. Yeah. All right. Look, I, I mean, Army of Darkness, I still say, is my favorite movie of all time. So it's a great you know, choice. You can't mean that really, though. I, I do. I do say that. I just am proud of you that it's not a Fast and Furious film. Uh, you know, I really like the Fast and Furious movies a lot, but Army of Darkness is is special in a stupid way. <laughs> in a dumb way. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I think we've we've come full circle on Dwayne Johnson. There we go. <laughs> oh, no. Wait a minute. I don't know. I unascribed to this. <laughs> How did that happen? I don't know. Why are you the one? That, never mind. We're not going to. Okay. Do we have any more for the multimedia podcast? Or we should we, uh, should we cut our losses for today? Uh, I just want to put out there real quick, not really multimedia related, but there was a video that came out um, from CD Projekt Red for the their new cyberpunk game, uh, Cyberpunk 2077. It's multimedia. It's a oh. video. Yeah. Nice. Uh, it uh, not safe for work, so maybe uh, you know don't don't watch it at work. Uh, it is R rated in all the ways that R ratings can be. Uh, So, you know, know about that before you watch it. But uh, it seems good. Uh, Also, it seems like one of those, hey, this is an idea of how this game is. And they have like a giant, uh, this is not final, can change at any time, like watermark stamped across the picture the (laughs) entire time. They spent six months making a movie to sell their game they haven't started. Yeah, you can't clip any, any picture of it without that watermark so that there's no way that anyone can be confused. Um. It seems cool. It feels like they're playing it pretty straight. Like how much, uh, you know, I don't know how much you guys know about Cyberpunk, the tabletop game, which exists. Uh, it is a role-playing game system, much like uh, Battletech was or uh, 
Shadowrun or those sort of games. Yeah, I'm not Cyberpunk really deep into is that. Its, is its own one of those. Uh, and it looks like they're playing the idea of that game, not necessarily completely straight like a role playing game, but they definitely have, you know, there's character creation, there's points, there's skills, and that kind of stuff. Uh, it is a first person game. Um, so, you know, there's that also. Uh, it looks cool. Uh, it's a long video, though. Um, <laughs> it's like 50 minutes or something. So maybe, you know, scrub through it. <laughs> nice. So definitely check that out. Uh, that just like premiered like the other day or something. So cool. Very cool. Um, I guess we should say also uh, this is a video game podcast uh, to hug your families. Sometimes, even when people are going to video game conventions and tournaments, just make sure that you, uh, you know, treat every day special. I don't know that I want to get into it. Yeah, maybe just we'll leave it at that. No, everyone be good to everyone. <laughs>